we'll begin by putting together the piecing and the main bodies of the skirt. Now you'll see that I'm checking very carefully to make sure that I've got the right side of the fabric going against the right side of the fabric. Uh, and just for speed, I'm going to quickly pin these in place uh, and that way I know that the piecings are exactly where they need to be. So I'll make them both before opening the piece up and starting the sewing. That way there's never any confusion that they're on the correct side. There's never confusion that they are in the correct lateral half of the skirt. Now that they're pinned in place, I'm going to start sewing. So I'm just cutting off a piece of thread. This is a T60 thread. My apologies for the shaky camera. Uh, the new tripod is very sensitive. Uh, so this is a T60 thread in a matching color. This is just a plain burgundy. And I am going to use a running stitch to put these gores on. And you'll see that just as I work, I grab the pin and pull it out. And then I'll take a little back stitch every few running stitches. And this helps to make a secure seam, but then it also keeps the seam from ripping out over time. If, if any of those stitches should snap, which is rare, uh, when it hits the back stitch, it will prevent it from coming undone. So I'm almost to the end here, and I'll just secure my thread and fasten off when I reach this end point. And here we go. Now you'll notice that as I'm stitching, I'm kind of aiming for the little uh, crook between the two adjacent edges. Uh, and that's so that when the piece is open flat, it actually, there's a smooth line running down the side seam. Uh, to fasten off, I'll take several stitches in one place, and then you'll also see me take a couple of back stitches here, uh, going back the other direction. All right, moving on to the second one. Same exact process, nothing uh, dramatically different to see. In this next section, we will be adding the facing at the top of the side seams. And this is because this style of skirt doesn't have a single opening like most modern skirts. Most modern skirts have a center front, a center back, or a side seam opening, and they only have the one. This style has uh, openings at the tops of the sides which allows the skirt to be worn uh, throughout several different sizes. So we begin by drawing a three-quarter inch line away from the cut edge down to the notch that we made and then we'll draw a second line that's uh, our alignment uh, line for the edge of this piece of silk. Now the piece of silk is four fingers wide folded in half which is what I was showing you there with my fingers and we line the cut edge up with the second line that we drew, which was um, half the distance of the actual um, facing line. And we'll use a running stitch with a back stitch every few stitches. And you'll see as I get down to the bottom, I'll just trim this off. And then as I approach the very bottom, then I'll just fold this piece of silk up so that it is in line with my notch. And then I'll just stitch right through it. And I'll, I've switched to a back stitch here so that it's nice and sturdy. And when I'm done, what will end up happening is I will flip this to the inside and press it and stitch it in place. And then we have this nice clean folded edge that we'll be working against. Now that we're done, you can see I've clipped my notch all the way to the stitching. That's very important for what's coming. And then I'll take this to the iron and I'll give it a little press um, so that I, first I'll press it this direction with all the seam allowances going the right or this one direction. And then I'll finish by pressing it to the inside. And uh, here it is after pressing and I'm beginning to do the stitching. Now for this, I'm just using a very fine, very small whip stitch.
this area will take a lot of abrasion because it's right on top of the hips. So as the body moves, there's going to be a lot of uh, rubbing in this spot. And so I want to use very small, very strong, very neat stitches. Um, I'm My preference here is to use a running stitch just because uh, it's a little bit more innocuous on the outside. When I reach the bottom, I'll just turn the corner and go uh, along the end. And then when I'm done, I will just fasten off with a knot and uh, work the other four locations where this has to happen because it happens on both sides of the front piece and it happens on both sides of the back piece. Our next task is then to baste the side seams together so that we can start stitching them. Now we're doing this with a French seam, so this is slightly counterintuitive in that you need to put wrong sides together first. So you can see that piecing seam there is the outside of the uh, skirt. So we're basting these edges with the wrong sides together. And then we're going to uh, sit down and do a running stitch that's really close to the edge. So here you can see we're doing this running stitch that's maybe 3 8 of an inch from the edge. And we're doing a fairly tight running stitch. You know, it's a French seam, so we don't have to worry so much about strength, only because it's stitched twice, which means it's really nice and strong. So we can use a simpler, faster stitch to sew each pass. Uh, giving us a little bit more speed to the process. Now uh, the side seam is sewn now and we're removing the basting threads and then we'll take this to the iron and press the allowance open and then we'll press again to turn the allowance to the inside and then we'll stitch it a second time. So here we are with the nice big steam iron pressing this narrow seam allowance open. Now you see this little clay iron that I have. This was uh, made for me by, uh, or commissioned by a friend who works at Plymouth Plantation. Thanks, Dan Rosen. Uh, it's a cooling iron, so I use it to cool the fabric very quickly, and uh, it really helps keep the crease of the seam. So. I use the steam and then I immediately press with the coal iron and that helps secure everything in place. Many tailors do this with a block of wood. So now that I've reached the end of the seam, you can see my facings there. You can see that the seam is sewn on the outside. Now I have to turn the whole thing and press a second time and I'm just creasing right along the seam edge here. Now you can see I've switched to using the block of wood just so you have a chance to see both in process. Once this is uh, pressed in place, then I will sit back down at the sewing chair and then I'll do a second pass of running stitch and I'll make a slightly larger seam allowance than I used the first time. And by using a slightly larger seam allowance, I make sure that I am fully encasing the seam allowance from the first pass so that there aren't any raw edges or little bits of seam allowance that are sticking out on the right side of the fabric. So I'm beginning this seam here on the left end of the seam with some back stitches and I'm going to, before I get too far, I'm going to tuck this corner in and stitch it in place. So you can see I've just gone a few stitches and then I'm tunneling through to the corner. I'm this just hides the raw edges um, that are right at the top of that seam at the weak point where the join is um, just below the openings. And for this I'm just going to whip it closed. And once that's done then I'll return to stitching the seam with some running stitches and making sure that it's nice and secure. As you can see right here I just finished uh, closing the top and now I've turned the piece around so that I can work just a standard um, seam. And again I'm starting with a back stitch and then moving right into a running stitch for the remainder of the seam. I'm just keeping the back stitch at the top because that's where all the pressure is and I would really like for that area to be strong. 
but the rest of the seam for the most part is uh, pretty um, doesn't need to be particularly overly strong um, I will take back stitches across here where the piecing seam is and that has less to do with strength and more to do with the fact that the fabric is thicker and if I were to keep trying to do the running stitch then uh, my stitch length would change because of the change in the thickness of the fabric. So I switched to back stitch here so that I can maintain the right stitch length so that it looks right from the outside. And then as soon as I'm past those allowances you can see that I'm switching back to running stitch. Now I'm going to flash forward here so that uh, we can just get to the end. And just you can see that the running stitch is made very quickly uh, once you get into the habit of it. You just kind of push the needle along and shove the fabric up onto it as you go. And you can see that I'm using my fingernail on my thumb and my index finger of the left hand as almost like little tap pads for the point of the needle. Here I am at the end of the seam and I will again just take a few stitches in one place and a little bit of a back stitch, uh, two or three back stitches, and then I'll just cut off the remaining thread. So my apologies, but I found out that the video didn't really take well uh, when I shot it last. I, it was hot in here and I had a fan running on the table where the camera was. So I stitched all of this and finished all of this without really understanding that the camera didn't take. So I'm gonna pick some of this out so that I can show you exactly what I did here. All right. I have my hem stiffener in place, and it's this strip of linen, and I've laid it in along the edge here and basted around the top and basted across the bottom, and I've taken this hem stiffener all the way to the edge. Uh, this wool is relatively thin, so it makes sense to take it all the way to the edge so that I make the hem itself a little bit stiffer. If this were a thicker wool, I would probably move this hem facing up so that the raw edge is right here along the fold where I want to turn the seam allowance up. Okay, now that I've put those stitches back in, I'm gonna take this and uh, move this aside. But you can see I've got a bunch of basting stitches coming through here, and once the facing is in place and all this is secured and then the, the guard goes on the outside, which is one of the last steps, and by guard I just mean those strips that go along, the trimming that is gonna be made out of other fabrics. That's just gonna come right along the edge, and I'm gonna make sure that I stitch that through the facing and through um, you know, the upper edge of the stiffener, and that will just kind of nail everything in place. It also means that altering the length of the skirt has to happen without undoing any of the hem, and that's where we get the reasoning behind pulling up the tuck, which you'll probably hear about if you spend any time studying historical skirts, you hear about the tuck. And that's, um, that's what that is, is it's an alteration to allow for length and it also allows um, to regulate it a little bit. And also it's great if you put a couple of them in if you're making something for a child, that way as they grow, you just let the tucks out. So here I am now back at the iron and I'm just giving a little bit of a press to the seam allowance at the bottom. The hem stiffener has been put in place and basted all around. Now, the hem stiffener, if you recall from when we cut this out, the hem stiffener is just torn strips of linen. And as they were stitched into the hem, 
the edges are just overlapped and you just baste right over them. There's no real need to like stitch them together solidly. So once it's in place, we then turn the seam allowance up at the bottom. And by seam allowance, I really only mean about half a dedo because if you you know consider the fact that a facing is going to go on and a, and a guard is going to go on and then any alteration to this is going to be done far above you really don't need to use a large allowance now there is a, a surviving garment that it appears to have a full width seam allowance that's the same uh, width as the hem stiffener uh, but it's really old and kind of uh, hard to gauge for sure so in this context, I like to just treat the bottom like any other edge of the garment the way you would do the center front of a garment where it has a facing and some trim. So in this instance, we're just folding this up and moving forward. The next step for our work is going to be attaching all of these strips together to form the facing. And this is just real basic. There's nothing dramatic or magical about it. What we do is just put our selvage edges together, or whichever edges you have, and just do a quick and easy back stitch. Look, I'm not even knotting this. I'm just making sure that I can take two stitches in one place, and that makes it nice and secure. And then I'll just work a line of back stitches Cross. And my stitches in this case don't have to be particularly perfect because it's just for a facing. You know, I'm using a back stitch because it's nice and strong, but I don't need to make this like teeny tiny and flawless. As I'm making these facings, I'm going to turn them always right side up after I finish the seam. That way, as I move to the next one, and start to work on it, I'm never for fear of uh, having a seam facing the wrong direction. So the last seam I did with a right to left back stitch, but this one I'm going to do with a left to right back stitch because I find it much easier and more accurate. I also noticed that I was pulling my uh, stitch tension a little bit tight on the last one. Not that it really matters that much because of the location and visibility of this strip, but in an effort to keep everything regular and even, I'm changing the way that I stitch to make sure that I can get it um, accurate and not quite so sloppy. So I've taken my facing to the iron, I've pressed my seams open, and then I have pressed my seam allowances back at the top and bottom edges all along the length of this. And now I am laying it in place along the hem of the skirt. I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch of the skirt hem exposed right here, and then I'm basting about a quarter of an inch back from the folded edge of the facing. I'm pulling this slightly snug as I baste it in place just to make sure that it stays nice and flat. And then once all that basting is complete, then I'll go through and I will pick stitch this facing in place along the hem. Now that I've moved over to the hand sewing chair back in my normal position, I'm just gonna take a little bit of footage here of stitching this hem uh, hem facing in place, just kind of in my natural habitat. I really like the aerial view because you get an idea of like where the rest of the skirt is instead of just this small singular location uh, when you're looking into my lap. But I think um, this is more effective in showing you what the process is really like and what the speed is really like. Notice with the thimble, it doesn't really move very much. Um, my finger stays curled and I'm just pushing with the side of my finger. There's very little need to use the tip of the finger in this style of sewing. Use the tip of the finger um, in a closed top thimble when you're doing things like embroidery and um, quilting. But when you're doing something that's as side to side, the motion is very side to side like 
actual sewing, um, then you can just use a closed top or an open top thimble. So with these stitches, I'm going through the hem seam allowance and in as much as possible into the linen canvas beneath. I'm trying really hard not to go all the way through to the outside, although I can feel with my finger that I've already done that a couple of times. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The sensitivity with your thimble and the depth of the stitch that you need to create is something that comes with time and practice. So I think you'll find this interesting. When I start working the top edge of this facing, I'm only going to baste along this edge and I'm going to do it very carefully and evenly and make sure that I don't move up and down too much. And then what I'll do is I'll cut and make the strip, the decorative strips that go on the outside and then the bottom line of that strip, which will sit approximately here, is what I will use to stitch the top edge of the facing in place. So I'm economizing the number of passes that I have to make around the skirt. Uh, especially since there's so much hem involved, the fewer passes that I can make, the better. I've got a thread of thin, weak white thread going on here, ready to start basting this. And I'm basting this right along the edge. And I'm going to use a relatively long baste. I don't need a ton of stitches on the outside to guide me. I'm basting this 1 8 of an inch away from the upper fold of this facing. And because we have a straight grain strip of fabric that's being put into a curve, I am, you can see that it's a little bit wob wobbly and I'm going to strategically be putting these little bits of fullness into position so that I know that the appropriate amount of ease has been taken in. And then when we stitch the guard on the outside, it will very conveniently kind of nail all of this into place. We don't ever even have to worry about it. We'll be able to catch everything tidy and neat the way we should, and we won't have to think about it. It'll be effortless. You can see as we get along to the center front and center back of this skirt, there'll be fewer tucks that I have to put into the facing because the center front and center back are quite flat. And you see that I'm using both hands as I'm doing this basting. My right hand to take the stitch and my left hand to receive the needle. My left hand is the one that does the draw on this because if I try to draw with my right hand, it's likely that I'll like pull too much tension into the surface and I really don't wanna do that. So when I pull with my left hand, I can hold the fabric down with my right and prevent any issues from happening um, in terms of puckering and pulling too hard. Join us in our next video as we make and apply the guard to the outside of the skirt as well as finishing the waistband and um, making the eyelets to tie it in place. Thank you so much and happy stitching.